Okay, I showed you the particle it had a black and a white spot. It basically comes through like this. And here's where it charged up and literally exploded. The vision of the black and the white here, and they came back together here. That's normally what you call fission. The black and the white divided fission and the fusion. And here's what it shows uh, from Fermi Lab is what they're looking for, and I believe that's what we did. There's the fission, and the white turns into showers, and here's the fusion. When they first came in, both of them were the black and white balls, remember? They came in like this. And then they separated into a shower and a, 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 what they call a sterile muon. So I think they should take a look at that before just discounting everything and saying there is no momentum, there's no mass in a, in a photon. And I say, literally right now, I don't see anybody that understands what light is other than what, what I can show. And I can show this and it's just discounted by saying, oh, you don't know what you're doing, you're, which is hard to accept because that is pulsed red laser. All right, you see all the particles in the air that are concussing and glowing. That's because these magnetic fields of the, of the forward shooting particles are concussing with their magnetic fields. Simple as that. Now, what is this right here? That is the Venturi. Right here is the Venturi. And it's, it, it's, it's a well-known phenomenon, which is to accelerate and atomize gasoline in the old cars. That's used to how they used to not have injectors to squirt them in there like a, a squirter so they vaporize. But they used to have a, a, a venturi, which is nothing more than a restriction. And you tuned that restriction with a little needle valve, they called it. I'm not kidding you. And you just turned it in a little more, a little more, a little more. And then you would get more and more atomization on the other side. If it, They just call it rich and lean. If it was lean, you'd be have it real tight and hardly get let any through there. If you had a rich, you'd be out here and you'd get a lot of gasoline in there. And if you had it just right, you'd just have just enough to get the right combustion. And I think you can do that with water. My father did. My father did. And it was so violent of a concussion on the other side. He had to do some special stuff. I'm not saying he just did it with a carburetor. But, uh, and, it, and it was so violent, the explosions, that it cracked the pistons. That was during World War II. All right, so I know you did see these particles. And you see how this leading one is white here, and now this top one is white leading? That's up and down spin, that they see them like that, and they just don't understand why is that one down now, why is that one up? Well, it's because the leading white edge charges up, and then it flips. That's called a muon wobble. All right, this is strictly to the point of fission here. And then after the Venturi, which is over this way, they came back and fused back together to form back to like this. Now, you see them coming in, there's really no definition to the particles coming in until they start to stack up at the Venturi. Up here, there's more particles. You don't see them because they're not being concussed yet. And they, they go flat like this, and then they turn up this way, and then they just explode at the Venturi. Totally explode. Same thing happens with the green. See, there's the green. Now, there's the green just getting ready to flip. You see how it's getting charged, and it's going to go flip. This is down, that's still down, flip, it's going to flip. And that's just spinning off like that. Very, very high powered. I'll show you the red and the green together. All right, this just makes it extremely obvious. You see the red coming through here, and you see the green coming through here. They're obviously interacting. It's pushing the red down. That should have been the red beam. And it should have sort of made its own little cone like that. Well, the green is so powerful, so get the hell out of the way. And look at them swirl like that. You see that? Those are particles. Literally, the particles turning into a swirl. You see them swirling? That's not normal. That's because this one's so fast compared to this one. It says, get out of the way, and it just spins it around in a circle. And that, uh, that is just very, very unusual. They should only spin this way, I believe. Just like this. These are spinning this way. I've never seen that before in any other type of interaction. Can you see that? See how they're spinning and swirling like that? That's not normal. And you see way over here they reconcuss. That's because they came through a cloud of disturbance. And you see the brilliance compared to that? This dull compared to that. These are very, very powerful, the green. The red just stops there. That's the end of it. 
Now I said we could do the same thing with the green. Well, we did. You see the black particles here all over the place? You don't see any over here, none. This is the venturi. Now, we, it's not tuned exactly like the red was. The red was tuned so that that it only let the white through. This is tuned so that it's pushing the white so violently to this side that no black can go with it and the black goes to the other side. It's like maybe the pins are offset just a hair. I'm not exactly sure why this happens, but I can tell you for a fact, there is no black over here. None. Zero. And all of the black particles went this way. That's so obviously we separated them again. There's no question about that. You see that? You see over on the right side? It's just a glowy, fuzzy looking glow, like a really impactful looking wave after wave after wave impact. Over this side, you got all those black particles. You see them in there? Everywhere. Total different one side versus the other. 100% difference. So we know we have separated the light once again. Now this is light spinning through the venturi, bumping into each other. Anytime you see an increased brightness, it means one of them is pushing the other one shoving back. That's why the brightness is happening right here. You see some of them going this way, some of them going that way. Light spins. It's coming this way, spinning. Some spin that way, some come over this way. Some spin this way, some spin that way. That's why you see these overlapping patterns. And you should see some of the patterns. Oh my God, the things that Rodney could turned up. Amazing. After six years of, seven years or even more. Phenomenal stuff. All right, not only can light bump off of each other, that's exactly what light is. If it's not bumping into something, there is no light. When they're bumping into each other, there is light. When they are swirling in a mass, there is light. When they can come through a cloud of vapor, there is light. When they crash into um, whatever this is, and basically this is a venturi, there is light. These are what the light particles are. When they stop concussing and banging into each other, there's no more light. So the answer is yes. They can bump into each other, and that's the only time you see light. See this? I did this back in 2015 after Rod presented me with some pictures that I just blew my mind. Because it... it Alright, this was from 2015. I put this up. I said, light is dark energy and dark matter in the vacuum of space. Well, there is no vacuum of space. It's loaded with these particles, plus dust, plus sodium, plus all kinds of particles they've never talked about before. And that is what we're scrubbing against. These are particles. They're not nothing. They're not, not massless like they think, even at Mayor Fermi Lab, they still think they're massless. I believe I saw something just a few weeks ago, Don Lincoln saying, they have no mass, how could they have momentum? Well, they do have mass, Don, <laughs> that's the key. And they're very heavy, as a matter of fact. When they, that's, I can show this in a nuclear blast, I will, in a second. All right, this is, I mean, this is what he says. This is Don Lincoln, he's from Fermi Lab. He's, he's one of the big shots there, I mean, he's a big, big shot. He's the mouthpiece for Fermi Lab. Him and Kirsty Duffy, and neither of them I can work with at all, but I can, I can show the particles they're looking for. Now, he's going to be talking about there is no mass to a photon. Listen. Mass have momentum. That's a... All right, here, let me start over here. All right, and that whole physics is everything thing. And you ask questions about things that don't make sense to you. A super common question is, how can a photon, which has no mass, have momentum? Now, is he just saying that? Is, it has no mass? No, he believes it has no mass. Listen. That's a good question, with a lot of complexity in the answer, so let's dive into it. All right, now this will go on for quite a while, and all he's going to do is be talking about equations, and I'm showing the particles. Now let's just come out here to the right. Before I begin, and I guess I should apologize, this video has more math in it than most. That's because the reason that people ask the question of how photons can have momentum is that they learned about momentum in a physics class and they learned the equation for momentum. So I have to build the explanation around that equation. Actually, you can watch this. It goes on and on and on about these. You know, he's right about having a lot of math. It just makes no sense at all either. 
uh, I'm showing the particles. So I'll put a link to this. Um, but they they have a mass, and that's why they work in an atomic bomb is the photons of light. But they have two pieces to that photon. There's a dark and a white side. And only in an, an atomic bomb or in our our venturi do they divide, as far as I can determine. I mean, it really is, um, it's not a barn burner, let's put it that way. Now, I'm going to go from here and see what he has to say, because it's only got a couple of minutes left. Here goes. Earth kinetic energy that works only at very low velocities. There are more precise approximations. There are endless levels of complexity. Well, you know, so that's the equation way thinking about this. The equations very clearly show that energy and momentum are related and that an object that has energy also has momentum, even if it has no mass. That's impossible, Don. No mass means there's nothing there. I showed the black and the white particles. When they impact, they literally push things. When you see a, a crook's radiometer work and you point the light at it and the black side moves forward. What it's doing is it's accepting a particle, it's banging into it, and it's literally pushing it from, uh, well, actually it's re-radiating it. It's absorbing it. It's black, called black body emission, I think. And it, re it absorbs it and spits it back out. And that's why the black side moves away. It's fully understood with electron flood theory because the two particles, only the black has, has mass. Basically, that's what I can see. And I'm going to show you that right now, an atomic bomb. And I don't think they understand this a Fermi lab. They spend in billions and billions and billions of our dollars. Now, let me show you why I can prove that photons and electrons and these, these little bits have mass because of an atomic bomb. Here it comes. All right, here it goes. I'm going to stop this as it, it, it moves forward. What I am saying is that, hold on, let me turn the light on. Alright, I am going to show you right now why I can say that there's two particles that make up electrons. One of them has a mass, that's dark matter, they call it a muon neutrino, and then there's the electron neutrino, which is the white glowy burny part. That's cold, hot, and heavy, I mean cold and heavy. This is hot and... and it might not have any any mass to it at all. He might be right. The, the 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 glowy part might not have mass, but the other part that's attached to it does. Now, when they go through a nuclear explosion or through our venturi, they separate. Our venturi is not cataclysmic because you're not starting out with gigantic particles. You're starting out with one particle and breaking it. Here you're starting out with these and ending up with gigantic balls of matter, which cause extreme damage to long distances and just like this house they started with a pile of particles that were surrounded by all these white particles because they will always be on the outside they want to get away from each other so it's a ball of white particles with the dark ones inside then they slam them all together and the white ones say oh no 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 get out Boom! they go the white ones take off first they will burn this house they won't move it they'll just burn it and then behind them, the black ones will follow and smash the house to bits. Not, not burn it, though, just smash it. And then, because the black particles that are stick, still stuck at when a, a bomb started, they want those white particles back. They will turn around and come back. Watch what happens. This is called Adam Central, and this was the teapot Apple II house that they tested to see how it would do it. Now, watch what happens. I'm going to run this. It's running about 50% of speed. Now watch. The first thing will go off, you see a gigantic flash. Boom. You see that? That's the huge... I, I'm stopping it here and there. That's just a, nothing but a, a white flash. And that's the, all the white particles that were on the outside. Now, there's just enough of them that they can just look at it. Burn, burn, burn. It's burn. No, nobody's moving. It's just a burn. Burning, 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 burning. Look at it. It's just burning. Why? I thought an atomic bomb banged everything and knocked it around. No, it burns everything first. And then comes the heavy-duty stuff. All of the burnable stuff is gone. Now comes the heavy-duty stuff. And watch. Bam! There it goes. And then, now it's not burning anymore. It's just pushed. And that's the black particles following their white partners. And now it goes way out. And then watch it turn around and come back. See, so you can turn around and come right back. 
because the black particles now don't want to be alone. Okay, I have literally shown this over and over. That is what a photon looks like. They come in red, they come in green, they come in blue, the ones we've seen. Now, they have a fixed particle, which is exactly what Fermilab says. is one fixed particle, doesn't change whatsoever, surrounded by a glow, which is exactly what you see. And there's one here and one here. They don't radiate, they don't illuminate, they don't do anything other than attract. They are literally gravity. Now, the white portion is what they call a point particle. Don, this is from Don Lincoln. This is from an article Don Lincoln did. Now, for some reason, he doesn't understand that there's there's no mass. He says he says there's no mass. Well, obviously there's mass, and I can show you there's mass. And we know that light literally forces things to move. It, it light hits a solar collector and and it forces electrons into conduction. Obviously, these are electrons. They move now. But but I that's why I say I haven't found anybody that understands the particle nature of the dipole nature of of particles. Everything is made of electrons. And one of these is an electron. Two of them back to back, like two bar magnets. And then when you get up to 1840 or so, they become pretty much a stable unit. And that's what's called a proton. Or, well, 1839 would be a proton. 1840 is a neutron. And these black ones want nothing more than it reattached to the white ones, and they are tight, tight, and they hold that tighter than hell. And the only way we could separate them is through the Venturi, which I showed, or I will right now.